2008, I think it belongs to one of those early batches of interaction design. So they were the first ones who got us uh, with the with specialization in interaction design uh, into this, into this uh, uh, into the whatever corporate or career whatever. So the the uh, interesting thing about Atish is that uh, right from the early time he left IDC. He has always set this uh, uh, passion and mind on uh, being on his own. And uh, I think he has, he, has, he has found his calling in uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, AR and VR as it's called. Uh, very, very uh, in the early stages of this industry, it was, was emerging. I think uh, Arthur's book is uh, journey in that domain. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, such a one which, you know, we hear it as a, as a normal thing probably in the time that he started. Must have been a good point for him. To, when, uh, uh, it's not audible. It's not it's, audible? Yeah, can you just come closer to the mic? Okay. I'm not able to see now. Okay. Is it okay now? A yeah, little better, yeah. Okay. Okay, let me try and. Yeah, he ventured out into doing something so so early in his uh, career, as we know, has got good applications and has got uh, such diverse areas where it is still finding its place. But uh, we're so, so proud to have somebody from our community who has ventured into this and, uh, and uh, interestingly has, our call has been very successful. But uh, Atish, Atish says that he has he had his own set of uh, hits and misses, and that's why he cited as the journey of the ARBR and the hits and misses that he went through. Um, he's going to talk about uh, some of the ventures uh, that that he uh, co-founded early, and currently he is a co-founder of uh, in in VR, and he's going to talk about what they do also. And I think it's also trying to give us a glimpse into what led him into going into AR, VR, and metaverse as as the new addition to this whole domain. Uh, how he went about it, and what are the what are the successes that he has had, and um, and what he also sees as the as the way forward, and what is currently doing. There are some innovative work that he's doing, uh, despite a whole lot of challenges that he has. As, as any uh, service delivery would have. Uh, it would be very, very interesting to uh, understand, know, and also appreciate uh, what it takes to uh, deliver something uh, in an industry which is so complex. Uh, without taking too much of your time, I would uh, hand over the session to Atish. And Atish, uh, it's all yours. Thank you. Hey, Ravi. Thanks a lot, uh, Ravi. Uh, thanks, Nimesh, uh, first of all, for in inviting. And uh, 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 thanks for everyone to join. And I can see a few of my batchmates here, and you know, I'm really tempted to talk to them right away. But yeah, I'll control my emotions for now. Okay. Um, so, uh, like uh, Ravi mentioned, uh, so, 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 so uh, we are trying to do something into augmented reality and virtual reality space. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he just asked me to uh, mention or, you know, uh, uh, walk you, uh, you all through in a form of a story kind of a way. So, you know, I have just uh, put down my thoughts, you know, uh, uh, feel free to, you know, interject or interrupt me anytime and, you know, ask questions whatever you all want and you know i would love to have a discussion around that and you know maybe we can have a very good uh, conversation uh, a two way kind of a communication and then you know uh, make this thing uh, more interactive so uh, so yeah without uh, wasting much time what i would do is i would quickly uh, share uh, a quick uh, uh, tech sort of a thing which i have made and uh, you know I'll, I'll try to give you all a glimpse 
about uh, what we have been doing and uh, you know how 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 everything started how things are going and so on um so yeah let me see when my screen is visible okay um yeah we can see it okay cool uh, so uh, first of all i like quickly introduce myself uh, so my name is atish and uh, i come from 2006 2008 batch of interaction design from idc and uh, uh, so so uh, that is a place and that is a time when you know we we got exposed to a lot of interaction design and and uh, that thing really filled uh, inside in a form of a passion uh not just me but uh, you know most of our batchmates uh, who were there at that time uh so so when we were uh, you know uh, at idc at that time itself there were a lot of thoughts lot of ideas a lot of brainstorming amongst us uh, you know going on you know uh, that we should do something of our own uh but when was the biggest question so uh, those talks uh remained you know talks and stories and you know uh, uh but uh, we and then we all went on uh to join our respective jobs but you know uh, since we are designers we are always passionate about something and uh, uh it is uh, that passion and that that uh, that uh, state of you know uneasiness which actually uh, motivated uh, me and uh, my batchmates to actually you know uh, uh start a startup called ubi and uh, ubi is something which is uh, uh which is the, the full form of that thing is out of box interaction and this was also coined by one of my batchmate uh, my my friend um and uh, so so that is the time when we were thinking that you know we should have something like uh, uh intro interaction design kind of a startup uh, but it should be something different it should be you know not just a startup or not just a studio it should be something else you know what it should be uh, we we did not know that and you know it's it's a journey which actually eventually uh, led us to understand what something like this would be uh so ubi let me tell you first so ubi is something like you know out of box interactions uh wherein we uh, created um uh, interactive solutions uh and at that time uh, large multi touch screens were like uh, you know one of the coolest uh, uh gadgets out there so we thought you know why not leverage uh, these large multi touch screens as a solution and uh, and and build some interesting products and solution on top of it so 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 this passion actually led us to you know create uh, this solution wherein we created this kinds of uh, large multi touch screen solutions for you know real estate uh, developers uh, we did it for uh, uh, retail folks and and so on so i i would uh, you know quickly like to show you guys a quick glimpse of uh, what that uh, uh, solution is So this is a pretty old and raw video uh, which I could find. Okay. So uh, this is something what we built at that time. So so this was uh, in 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 2012 when uh, you know real estate developers and retailers they did not have. Uh, uh they they were not using technology uh, uh for showcasing their products for showcasing their uh you know uh, uh, be it uh, uh, customization of some some spaces uh and uh, you know we, we found this gap wherein real estate was like you know one of the huge investment which the person does uh, in his lifetime but he used to showcase everything on paper these brochures and you know very small layouts it did not justify 
So we thought of you know leveraging these kind of large multi-touch screen solutions to provide uh, you know a, a, a mechanism to showcase these kinds of uh, uh, large products. So this is just a glimpse of it, and uh, you, if you can see, there are a number of features which we added. Uh, you know, it actually gave a virtual view, virtual walkthrough of uh, uh, you know. Uh, what kind of a property you would be living in? What would be uh, the 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 surrounding, the nearby places, and all those things? Um, so, also this had had lots of cool features, like you know, it could show. Uh, at what time of the day you can see sunlight from which balconies and you know those kind of things which we introduce at that time and uh, 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 to be frank this was one of the coolest uh, product at that time uh, which actually real estate developers adopted and uh, there was no such solution at that time which uh, you know we, we actually innovated uh, and you know, uh, develop. Okay. So, uh, So what happened is, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll just give you a story of behind this. So we, we started this company in 2012. Uh, by 2013, it became so popular that we actually added close to around uh, top 10 real estate developers uh, uh, across India. Uh, and uh, not just that, we also started expanding to, you know, uh, once, once, once this particular product, it actually got successful. Then we started uh, expanding this uh, uh, solution or we started customizing this solution to other real estate uh, or say other retail purposes for uh, product showcasing and marketing. Uh, so that is when we actually uh, provided these kinds of uh, large screen solutions to you know folks like Godrej Interior who started leveraging these solutions for their interior, custom interiors, uh, customization solutions and so on. So they again, uh, you know, uh, opened up stores across Pan India in different uh, metros wherein they started using the setups. So not just, you know, folks like uh, uh, interiors and, you know, real estate developers. It was also, you know, uh, organizations like Tanish who actually started showcasing their high jewelry uh, show uh, uh, products uh, and you know uh, started using these kinds of uh, 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 solutions for for showcasing uh, their products. So so that is how the journey went on. But uh, you know uh, close to around uh, within a span of uh, three years, we had uh, uh, we had uh, you know uh, uh, started engaging or started uh, we we signed up with close to around two hundred odd real estate developers and that is when we we got a proposition from one of the you know uh, uh, one of the largest real estate portals in india for an acquisition and uh, we were pretty bootstrapped uh, and at the same time we were we were profitable but the, the offer was something really interesting and uh, you know uh, we we also had uh, things in mind that even though we are small we we don't don't have the reach across India, and that is when we uh, decided that we should get acquired. Uh, but once we got acquired, then you know uh, we we scaled the whole solution to close to around uh, 600 odd real estate projects in Pan India. And uh, uh, to my knowledge, at that time in tier tier one cities, uh, there were close to around 400 to 500 projects itself, which were really prominent and which were you know, actively selling, and uh, uh, I think uh, close to 90% of that was was you know uh, covered by us, and and uh, our solutions were being used at that time 
by by most of these real estate developers to showcase their product projects and you know uh, while while selling their homes so so in a way what we did is through our uh, it, it was our design thinking it was our you know innovative approach to utilizing these kind of technologies uh, which actually helped us come up with uh, this kind of uh, an interesting solution and at same time it was that knack of you know uh, understanding what exactly uh, the market is requiring at that time and which sector or which segment is requiring uh, where it might be adopted quickly and so on and and, and that thing actually worked so 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 uh, and and uh, luckily we we came one of the first players in this space who actually started uh, you know uh, uh, disrupting the way uh, uh, these uh, product showcasing or product selling was happening so 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 this was uh, something what happened with ubi so what i would now move on to is uh, more something interesting so after uh, we got acquired by this company we stayed with them we learned how to uh, scale um, a particular business or you know how to scale a reach uh, but so so spending close to around 6 7 years 6 years uh, in real estate and you know in in these kind of marketing solutions uh, what we started thinking is you know uh, let's use this skill let's use this knowledge uh, to come up with something more uh, interesting or or a solution or uh, which is uh, very core uh, for a very core purpose and uh, with that in intention Uh, we started NGVR. So NGVR, we we call it as infinite virtual reality. And uh, so, as an NGVR, what we are trying to do is, uh, we are trying to leverage uh, latest cutting edge AR VR solutions for various core uh, purposes. And uh, at NGVR, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to focus on. Uh, Uh, heavy engineering heavy manufacturing kind of industries only and uh, we are trying to solve few of the core use cases or core pro- problems uh, through these technologies now these tech- these these core use cases are something like you know uh, showcasing a product uh, which is of very very complex in nature uh, it, it's like a huge product which can't be carried uh, and you know which can't be showcased or the working of it cannot be explained uh, so or uh, you know for, uh, using ar vr for you know remote maintenance repair or all kind of scenarios or you know uh, we we started uh, leveraging ar vr solutions for uh, virtual reality based training and simulations which are now uh, you know uh, one of our major part of business and uh, through which we are trying to solve very very for solutions for uh, core problems especially you know in times of covid and things like that where when when there was a lot of travel restrictions and and uh, there was a lot of shift in online way of uh, learning and and so on so so just to give you you all a quick quick glimpse so here we are and uh, I'll share my tech once again so so this this is one of the uh the use cases which we have worked on i'll, I'll try to share a couple of more so that uh, you all get a uh, idea of you know different kinds of use cases this is another the use case which we have worked with one of the leading automotive companies um with uh, you know we are trying to train uh, uh, their uh, mechanics or or dealer mechanics to you know uh, know more about us and new variants which are launched what are the kind of new features which have been uh, what are the kind of new uh, uh, you know uh, uh, maintenance activities they have to perform on these new variants and so on so not just that we also work with uh, indian air force uh, uh, so for indian air force we have you know uh, developed such cr vr solutions for their uh, technical institutes uh, wherein uh, their trainees are trained up to two to maintain carry out maintenance activities in the tarmac area or uh, in the in the hangar area and so on uh, so so we have built uh, you know different modules right from 
you know various checks which needs to be uh, covered say for example pre flight checks or you know after flight checks uh, post flight checks uh, you know mass chilling activities what are the kind of uh, you know uh, steps they have to take into consideration let's say if case there is a fire situation and then so on so there are n number of such uh, uh, you know uh, uh, use cases so maybe what i can do is i can show you all couple of them, the videos of it so that uh, i i can't give you guys the vr headset and you know give you all that experience because uh, that experience is totally immersive and you know amazing but i'll, I'll try to uh, show whatever is possible through uh, through uh, you know screen sharing or through videos so so we are working with uh, so yeah so, so basically you know uh, there are different modalities in which we work with our customers so in few cases uh, uh in few cases they provide us this uh, basic information to which uh, we can create this kind of training modules or you know these kind of assets and we don't need to travel there but in many cases uh, you know we might have to travel and uh, in many cases also what happens is they provide us uh, with videos and images and these kind of detailed shots and steps to perform and so on and through which we can you know actually simulate this kind of an environment so also you know uh, uh, this is not a very easy job but uh, it requires a, a lot of experience process and also tools uh, which are of very proprietary to our uh, organization and through which we are we have successfully So I'll show you all uh, another video on uh, case study, which is again for uh, one of the oil and gas, but it's for educational purpose. Uh, I think.
okay so this is a virtual uh, prep uh, uh, to a website so this is just a very basic sort of a video uh, but in the detailed solution you know, there are a number of uh, uh, operation which needs to be performed uh, for operating these kinds of equipment you know, there are different safety aspects which needs to be considered and so, so, so all those things are covered share my text once again. Okay. So yeah, so so uh, on similar lines, so uh, we have been uh, creating these solutions. Uh, but uh, you know, just to give you a quick background, so so we started with this uh, in, in 2018, in 2019 we were you know, just trying to figure out what exactly should be done. Uh, in this AR VR space, how it should be done, you know, uh, and, and since we are this time dealing with uh, large organizations, you know, it was not so easy for us to, you know, figure out uh, uh, what exactly are the requirements, what would be the uh, the sales cycle, how how to you know uh, go and uh, you know propose them these kinds of uh, new end solutions. Uh, which which actually required a lot of learning, and uh, by the time we actually figured out in which direction we had to go, and you know, uh, uh, we started tracking some uh, interesting uh, subscriptions. Uh, Covid thing happened, lockdown happened. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the part of uh, lockdown was you know all the budgets of the organization were frozen, but uh, the pro, uh, the positive side of that was often actually pushed uh, people or organizations to think in this online direction, you know, remote ways of uh, training their uh, employees, their operators, technicians and so on. And that actually, you know, got us a lot of traction later on and you know, uh, with on top of which uh, uh, we are now trying to build. And uh, within this span of, you know, uh, two, two and a half, three years, we are actually working with few of the, you know, very renowned, uh, organized and renowned customers, uh, you know, uh, which which includes uh, organizations like Indian Air Force, Indian Navy. We are also working with, you know, few of the defense companies of, uh, uh, of US, uh, which is, uh, you know, very difficult uh, uh, to work. And, uh, yeah, on, on, on similar lines, yeah, there are few, you know, uh, 
organizations which are into healthcare and so on, again falling under uh, Fortune 500 category, with which we managed to kind of track and where you know, we are, we are uh, providing our subscriptions and our solutions. So, so this is a you know a very quick. Uh, I thought you know uh, comparison uh, which I thought of putting down uh, the experience of my past organization uh, or past startup and uh, you know this uh, interior new startup which we are trying to do and, you know maybe since uh, we have the shortage of time uh, maybe I can. I'll, I'll just leave this, leave to this particular slide over here and uh, I'll, I'll try to answer your question then in between you, you all can go through this and you know I'm sure in case that if there are any questions I'll, I'll try to answer them while discussing around it. So, 
If it was us, it was only us uh, with whom our customers were dealing with, right? But uh, this uh, particular organization which we are trying to build and the kind of solution which we are trying to, you know, uh, uh, provide. Uh, so there are a lot of competitors, and not just small competitors, but even big competitions. Uh, you know, even a billion dollar companies like, you know, LNT and uh, TCL, they are also trying to provide a similar solution to, you know, uh, organizations like Indian Air Force, Indian Navy and so on. And uh, winning against them, uh, uh, you know, is, is again a big challenge. But at the same time, we have taken up that challenge and we have been, you know, winning against them. So how we are doing it, uh, so, so that is something which is, uh, maybe, you know, I would like to share later on, but yeah. So, so these are like, uh, you know, some hits and misses. There are a lot of misses, uh, uh, at least, you know, 10 times more uh, misses uh, in, in the second organization which we are facing but we yeah, are maybe uh, if we get some detailed time we can definitely talk about it. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, thank you. So the question is what kind of tech stack are you using also Unity or something else? So yeah, uh, Madhuri Mostly, you know, these kinds of ARPR applications are built on uh, Unity as a platform uh, and it is like one of the most popular platforms. But, uh, you know, there are many core applications which also require native uh, builds or, you know, native, native uh, tech stack, uh, be it ARKit or ARCO and so on. Uh, so, so or, uh, Developing onto their native uh, platforms. So I don't know their name, my tech uh, friends, my tech co founders might be doing it. But yeah, uh, but as you mentioned, Unity is like one of the most popular and maybe 80% of the times it's, it's Unity only. So, yep, uh, okay. So, in case if there are any questions, please feel free or we y'all can also, you know, shoot me any questions or anything if you want. I'll just drop in my email ID. Hello, Atish. Am I audible? Uh, yes. Madhuk, yes. Hi. Yeah, Madhuk. Uh, very good presentation. Uh, right now, there is a buzzword which is going around that is the metaverse. And uh, what essentially it is that they are trying to provide a virtual environment to, to the larger masses of uh, the people. So, where do you see your solution in the upcoming uh, like 10 years or so? So, uh, Madhu, uh, uh, so, so, uh, so this is my personal thought. Uh, so, Metaverse is a very interesting uh, new terminology which is coined uh, by Facebook. But uh, if you see uh, that way as Metaverse, or you know that kind of solutions or that those kind of experience have always been there uh, since years now and uh, the, the thing is uh, you know uh, the, but what is happening is uh, because of these new terminologies or new new investments coming in from organizations like facebook and you know microsoft and and google uh, so what is going to happen is <clears throat> these devices and these solutions are going to be a lot more cheaper and they will be uh, the solutions also will be built 
uh, in a lot more uh, uh, scalable way uh, or you know uh, uh, like you mentioned uh, uh, in a cost effective manner so uh, what you mentioned is exactly correct and that is uh, the direction in which we are uh, uh, going as well and uh, maybe you know maybe two years down the line if we are having a presentation i would be presenting something on similar lines thank you atish you not take the plug i guess sorry you not you want take the plug i guess uh this this what what i have realized is this process is a bit slow and it takes its time uh, especially when you are a bootstrap company <laughs> not a funded one we have about 6 uh, minutes so we could have some three four questions which like I have a question. If uh, others are training there in their mind, um, can I can I ask? Yeah, uh, is there somebody? Okay, Ankur, you have a question. Yeah, I was saying, uh, Atish, if someone wants to invest in a good hardware, like right now, which one would you would you recommend for some VR experience? Uh, so, Ankur, uh, I think uh, if it is a standalone kind of hardware which you are looking for. uh then you know oculus quest uh is a very good hardware uh and you can you know invest in that in in india it's available in like ah uh, yes yes it is available in india but of course you know support and service is not available in india uh but you know uh, what we have experienced is uh, it doesn't matter too much uh, uh and uh, so at the cost which you are getting the kind of specifications which you are getting for that hardware is is uh, pretty so this is this is like an independent headset it doesn't need a strong uh, uh, hardcore pc etc yes it, it's an independent headset and it doesn't need a pc nor it requires a phone to be inserted in it so how much how much would that cost uh, so you can check out oculus quest 2 uh, it must be costing around uh, Maybe around four hundred or three hundred dollars. It's thirty-five thousand at the moment. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I'm just curious. Yeah. I had a question, Adi. Um, yeah, Pravi. Is it possible that you know we are now working on multiple industries uh, just for the sheer effort involved in? Is there a possibility that you will be able to create a lot of uh, core components or modules so that you can scale uh, your AR solutions to one, do it faster and do it at a much lower cost, or you are doing fresh building of content every time you get a project? Um, so first of all, Ravi, we are not focusing on each and every industry. So that is what. Uh, uh we were doing um uh, uh, at the early stages but uh, we realized that you know doing something like that uh, for a small organization is is not a good uh, approach so what we are doing is we are focusing on very few core industries uh, you know which which i mentioned uh and uh, you know uh, coming to your second point when you know uh, uh, reusable assets and things like that so of course uh, you know uh, there is a good advantage of uh, using it but what we have experienced is uh, uh, for different kinds of scenarios for different kinds of requirements uh, assets are not mostly reused uh, but there are very uh, there are many other ways of you know optimizing your efforts and making things scalable and so on So, so it's it's all the magic which is which goes in the background of creating those 3D assets and you know uh, creating these kinds of uh, training modules in a quicker way and all those things. So, so those are the things which we are, uh, anyways, uh, working on and you know uh, it will take time, but uh, uh, that is the direction in which we are going. 
do all of your training simulators involve haptic feedback so madhvi no uh, basically there are few simulators which require haptic feedback a uh, few simulators which don't require haptic feedback so for example we are working with uh, indian navy uh, for one of their uh, nuclear submarines in which you know uh, they have to get trained inside their nuclear submarines and uh, you know in nuclear submarines the, the space is very confined space uh, you have to bend and work or you know you have to not stretch too much uh, uh, stretch out yourself uh and without stretching out you have to work and all those things so for those kind of applications we are using um uh body suit and able haptic trackers and you know haptic sensors and all those things but uh the few couple of them which i showed you do not actually need that kind of a haptic feedback because uh you know that that level of training or you know that level of sensation is not required and it unnecessarily increases a lot of cost so cost is always a important parameter which comes into play and and you know few of the simulators where it is required uh, we provide those kind of haptic feedbacks few simulators or training content uh, which doesn't require we don't give that any one last question Okay, I think I would like to ask you a question. Ah, uh, please, please. So I just wanted to ask you whether you know virtual reality or any kind of uh, you know any kind of user interface or user experience which can be enhanced in your uh, you know in in fishing trawlers, basically uh, small small scale fishing industries where there are small fishing trawlers available. It can mm-hmm. you know uh, easy the easy the user experience of a fisherman. Mm. Uh, so we will. I I got your question, but you know I might not be able to answer it right away because see, uh, every industry has their own you know uh, areas where these kinds of uh, uh, AR VR solutions will definitely be applicable and be useful. Uh, the thing is, you know, we will have to uh, understand uh, which are those areas. uh but like i mentioned fishing trawlers uh, uh have a lot of maintenance and you know servicing activities again uh plus you know there are lot lot of safety aspects which needs to be kept into consideration uh where where they they can be used uh plus you know the in this shipping industry and which i'm sure you know might be applicable to your uh, particular use case as well so in in shipping industry you know uh, there are lot of uh, big uh physical simulators which are there uh, which are with regards to you know ship ka handling and navigation and so on which are now being replaced by vr headsets uh, because of their cost effectiveness so even there this thing is applicable so so uh, plus you know augmented reality is very very uh, applicable for for you know mro purposes uh, uh, of uh, these kind of vessels and trawlers and and so on so so we yeah, are there are a number of such areas and spaces where you know it is uh, in fact you know the, there are machines uh, and drones which actually go inside and you know do a hull ka inspection uh, but for you know driving those uh, or or handling those machines uska bhi simulators are, are there which come so wahan pe bhi you know you you can apply these uh, uh, these kind of solutions so there are n number of spaces uh you might have to go and dig deeper or you might have to go and talk to you know subject experts of uh, these uh, industries and they might be able to very in a pinpoint way able to tell you you know what exactly and where exactly you can apply so uh, basically i tried uh, you know i tried doing a research on the same industry where i got a uh, few companies which have which have been dealing with these things basically they are not from india but uh, i have one company called uh, ray marine uh, another company called sendrat which are working in this experience so uh, the problem with this com- uh, you know the the problem which i have seen in this companies are like if you buy, if you if you purchase a uh, an instrument called fish finder okay from uh, if you if you purchase an instrument called fish finder from uh, any german company then there are two two pieces 
Okay. One is the interface piece, and another is another is the digital uh, display for me. So uh, there is no there is no such kind of inter uh, there is no such kind of device where you know everything can be consolidated in one place. Like fish finder, be one me ya gaya. Uh, navigational compass, in, uh, interaction compass, every alarm system can be fitted into one thing. So, uh, I believe that if there could be something like augmented reality or something like that in this in this sector, it could be a great deal. Correct, correct. So, uh, Viraj, like I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the best people to talk to would be you know the experts uh, who are in the this industry. See, we are. Uh, basically, technologists. We also work with a lot of subject experts while developing these solutions because we can't have in-depth knowledge of you know each and every industry and each and every vertical and their operations and SOPs and so on. So we we uh, work a lot with subject experts. And similarly, if you talk to those subject experts, they might be able to share more ideas or share you know very precise thoughts around it. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank so, yeah. you so much for Thanks, thanks. So, so next question I think is apart from mostly training, do you think NCVR will work on VR entertainment in new future? If so, how? So, uh, answer to that, Madhvi, is you know, uh, we currently want to focus on to core, uh, uh, core solutions which we are building and uh, training is one of them. Of course, uh, you know, we would want to make training itself very entertaining for, for our users uh, and then for our customers. Of course, you know in that phase, you know you can uh, assume that NPVR can work uh, on making training entertaining. I think we get five minutes past our schedule close, and I know uh, hopefully this uh, this questions that people have uh, may be posted in our forum, and we we'll make sure that that reaches you, Atish, and we can uh, give more elaborate. Uh, responses to those and i'm also hoping that, uh, that people can reach out to you uh, through your in 5 vr uh, website and and uh, also we will share your contacts so that if there is any interest that people may have to connect with you uh, you should uh, i'm sure that you'll be able to connect with them and help them with any 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 questions or even any interest they may have in collaborating with you i guess um, Sure, sure, definitely. So, uh, I have already mentioned my email ID. I am mentioning it once again. Uh, feel free to reach out to me for, you know, any purpose. Uh, just sharing ideas, thoughts, or, you know, in case uh, uh, if you all feel there are any synergies and so on. Yeah, uh, definitely. So, there are some big fans of you, looks like, uh, coming up in the chat. And uh, what, a, what a presentation, I think. It's, it's a... It's a it's a pleasure listening to listening to you, and uh, also getting such a deep. I wouldn't call it a very deep dive, but definitely a good glimpse of uh, the possibilities, and uh, not just listening to and hearing about possibilities, but it's actually your uh, demonstrated things that you have actually done, and uh, that makes this a very valuable uh, session. Uh, and I what occurred to me is that at least. Uh, from IDC, there is somebody who has ventured into a domain which is so new and who knows that uh, you might become the VR AR man of India and that's what uh, on behalf of the entire group <laughs> we, we hope and we wish uh, in fact we are a lot of success and uh, really as you said I want to invite you back to the session uh, with a story which which uh, you think has you know, evolved from where you are today. And uh, on behalf of the alumni group, I thank you and uh, for your time and for the efforts that you put in in putting this together. And I also thank all the participants of the session. And uh, I know that you have had some issues in uh, in uh, getting this video recording promptly and correctly and all that. So hopefully, we will correct that and we should have a session recording of this uh, sent to you soon. Uh, we have some. Again, some interesting talks lined up, and uh, we'll keep posting those information to you. And once again, a very big thank you to Atish, and also a very big thank you to all those who attended. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Ravi. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the time.
thanks all the batchmates and juniors and super seniors thank you thanks bye all right thank you